Welcome back to UCTV. I'm Tanner Voss. And I'm Jacob Kainrad. Let's go ahead and get this episode rolling. It's hard to believe that school is less than a month from being over. Right? It feels like yesterday we were just getting back into school and getting everything rolling. And was end of the school just around the corner? Prom is coming up. So let's send it to Caden with more on that. It's finally that time of year. Prom is this Saturday. But prom's of course going to look a little bit different this year since we'll be having it at the ballpark here in town as opposed to Tiger's Den where it's been in previous years. Those who are in charge changed it to the baseball field as a COVID precaution, the open air making it a safer environment to be in. The Grand March starts at 7.30 and will be in the baseball field parking lot. Everyone is welcome to watch the Grand March. Then prom itself starts at 8. I hope to see all the juniors and seniors there, and I hope to see a big crowd for the Grand March. Back to you. Thanks, Caden. I hated how last year went with quarantine and we all had to miss out on prom. Yeah, but something else missing is the lack of school spirit here around school. So let's send it to Meadow with more on that. I know it's getting close to the end of the year, but I was wondering, what happened to school spirit? I've heard stories about the students being crazy and painting faces and dressing up in weird costumes. I got a glimpse of what it kind of used to be the first game I went to my sophomore year. Everyone was screaming and just being goofy and loud, and I almost lost my voice that game. But as the years went by, the student section has become smaller and smaller. I know it's my senior year and I won't be a part of the student section next year, but I really want to see the student section fill up all the way with um, face paint, costumes, posters, or anything you can think of. So I challenge you guys to get the school spirit back next year. This awesome school has been missing an epic student section. I know it was hard with the pandemic this year, but support our Tigers, be crazy, and have fun. I'm Meta Shons, back to you. Thanks, Meadow. I really miss hearing all of the fans cheering and the roar of the crowd during basketball. Yeah, me too. Cheering on my teammates will definitely be one of the things I miss most about high school. Yeah, absolutely. And you guys have been watching this for quite a while, and you might wonder how hard it actually is to public speak on camera. Yeah, public speaking was definitely one of my <laughs> biggest flaws when I came into this class. And see, it's pretty hard. So let's send it to Emily with some tips and helpful tricks to help you out. Public speaking is a huge fear that a lot of people have, which is totally understandable. I really didn't like it a few years ago either, and it still makes me very nervous now. However, I have found some ways to be more comfortable while speaking. One of the first things that my speech professor taught us was to present yourself in a respectable manner, meaning you should try to wear something appropriate for the occasion and also something that makes you feel more confident. If you just wear sweatpants and your hair isn't brushed, your audience will focus more on that rather than the message that you are trying to get across. You will also lose a lot of credibility. Another thing is to know your audience and your topic and all of the information you need to support what you are saying. It is crucial that you know your information so you don't just ramble on or lose your place and have no idea what to say after that. Knowing what you were talking about and being prepared to go off script is a very good ability to have. Personally, a speech is a lot easier for me if I organize it to tell a story. This will help you keep your place while talking, but also keep your audience invested in what you are saying. Find a message that connects you to the audience. Once you find your story, practice, practice, practice. It doesn't always make perfect, but it does make you prepared. Good luck speaking. Thank you, and back to you. Thanks, Emily. Yeah, stepping in front of a camera and doing it myself has definitely helped a lot. Now, switching gears, and on a more serious note, we're going to send it over to Josh to talk about his broken wrist that he suffered during the Ringwood Tournament. Last weekend, I was playing in the Ringwood Tournament, and that became the last game I had ever played. I ended up breaking my wrist, diving for a ball into the wall. I want to take this moment to tell you guys to never take anything for granted. Always go out and give it your all in whatever you're doing. Always show up to school, practice, meetings, and everything, because you never know when it will be your last time doing that thing. We have learned throughout this pandemic to not take anything for granted, but even without the pandemic, make sure you guys enjoy every little moment because at any point in time, it can just end. Baseball has been the only thing I have loved my entire life and with only one week left in the season, it came to a screeching halt. So I challenge all of you, be involved, be great, and give it your all every moment of your life. I'm Joshua Morrison, back to you. 
Thank you, Josh. I feel terrible about your wrist, and I wouldn't let any one season or career anything like that. Especially being a senior and playing his last season, we wish you the best, Josh, and a fast recovery. Absolutely. Let's send it to Sabre with the mugging going around Union City. I'm here at the scene where Mr. Bench has been mugged, and this isn't a normal kind of mugging. Someone keeps leaving mugs in Mr. Bench's classroom, and we cannot figure out who it is. We have a couple suspects, but we cannot release their names. So, if you see any suspicious activity around Mr. Bench's classroom or anywhere around the school involving mugs, please contact authorities. Thanks, Sabri. I wonder who's putting those mugs on Benji's desk. I don't know, but it's honestly pretty funny. And maybe we'll find out someday who it is. Next, we have Blaine with upcoming events. So let's send it to him. Many of you know the end of every school year is jam-packed with events. The events range from prom to academic and athletic banquets to even the well-known junior and senior softball game, which is a blast, by the way. This is a few of the many events that make Union City great and stick out. The junior and senior softball game is going to be held on May 5th, and it's going to be at the softball field at 2 p.m. This is going to be a very fun event, and if you have some time, you should definitely stop by. The sports banquet is going to be held on May 11th, starting at 6.30 at the new gym. And on the following day, the academic banquet is also going to be held at the new gym at 6.30. And as for prom, it has already been decided to be held at the baseball field on May 1st, starting at 7.30. This will allow us to have plenty of room and stay within CDC guidelines. There are also many more events in the month of May. But if you would like to check more of those events out, go ahead and get a sheet of green paper that's in front of the middle school office. Thank you and back to you. Thanks, Lane. You ready to get beaten that junior senior softball game? <laughs> you wish. Good luck. Speaking <laughs> of sports, playoffs are right around the corner for our baseball and softball teams. Yeah, so let's go ahead and send it to Tyler for more info on that. Your softball girls fought very hard in district, with senior Emily Lockridge hitting a walk-off in game one, but falling short in game two. But they came out and literally dismantled teams in game three and game four, and then in game five, it just wasn't there and they just fell short. But I want to say congrats on a great season. You seniors gave it all you got for the past four years, and to the girls that are following behind, it's just one step closer. Switching gears. Boys baseball came out strong in beating District Game 1 against Covenant. First game was 10-3, then beating Thomas the second game 12-5. And in the final game, they beat Thomas in Game 3 for the District title 5-4. Your boys are regional bond next Thursday, Friday, and possibly Saturday. I want to thank everybody for coming out all year long. If you can be there, be there and support. This is Tyler, UCTV Sports. Back to you. Thank you, Tyler. Congratulations to the girls on a great season. And good luck to the boys in regionals. FCA has an upcoming event, so let's go ahead and send it to Chris and see what the details and the info about that is. As you guys know, we have been reporting on FCA Day for a while, but we haven't got into the details. Well, recently, FCA has had a meeting and are making the final decisions for the upcoming event. Now, don't worry, we will still have the car bash, checkers, chess, music, and even now some face painting and maybe some temporary tattoos. However, they did add something that we think everyone will be excited about. They will be having the teachers come out and you get to throw something at them. This could be a water balloon, flour, whipped cream, or even some colored chalk dust. You will have to pay to participate in this activity, but FCA wants everyone to have a chance, so they have made sure to keep it cheap. Also, they will be having tables and picnics outside for everyone to eat outside if they want to spend more time. But just remember to bring a couple of dollars on May 12th for the car bash and the pieing the teacher in the face if you want to participate in everything. We should get the final decision soon and we will make sure everyone knows about this great day. Back to you. Thank you, Chrislyn. A lot of us are excited for FCA Day and we think everyone will have a great time. I'm sure it will be a blast. Well, that's all we have for this week. I'm Jacob Canerad. And I'm Tanner Voss. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you for tuning in.